Hello, I'm Dallas, and today I want to talk to you about an animation channel that I really love called Dwen, and their use of visual narrative in animation. Dwen is an avant-garde animation channel that I stumbled across all the way back in 2017. The channel is mainly focused on critiquing modern society through the use of visual symbolism, tone-setting music, and intense, emotionally evocative color palettes. One of the most defining features of Gwen's animations is the unsettling lack of dialogue. While most traditional animation channels use dialogue or narrative to convey information, Gwen takes to heart the old adage of show, don't tell, allowing dialogue to take a backseat while the visuals deliver us the narrative information. Gwen's most powerful and impressive use of visual symbolism while conveying the clearest narrative has to be in their most recent video, Twins in Paradise. This video is such an excellent showcase of how we can convey narrative, character development, tone, and symbolism all without relying on verbal exposition or long strings of dialogue. If you haven't already, I highly recommend watching it for yourself not just because it's an outstanding piece of art and animation, but because it'll give this video a lot more context. All right, you back? Cool. So instead of trying to break down every instance of visual storytelling in Twins in Paradise, instead, I'm just gonna break down the opening sequence. The first shot is the lavish interior of some kind of mansion, already giving context to the titular paradise mentioned in the title. Quickly it cuts to a person turning on a TV to a news channel reporting on what appears to be a massive nuclear explosion and thousands of deaths. The person holding the remote quickly changes the channel and we see some kind of ad reminiscent of Christian evangelical advertisements you might see today claiming that the end is fast approaching. Once more the channel is quickly changed to sports TV news where we see a pair of twins have won the tennis semifinals. The camera cuts to reveal that the person changing the channel is one of those two twins, her sister sitting beside her. Now, immediately, Vwen's introduced us to both the main characters as well as establishing this overall sense of impending doom, and as viewers, we can immediately gleam the role tennis plays in their lives, more important than the end of the world. Visually, Vwen begins conveying who these sisters are, what they care about. One sister is excitedly watching them on TV, clearly driven by success, while the other is not as interested. This point is driven further simply by observing each sister's posture and framing in the scene. The long-haired sister sits upright, with open body language that conveys confidence and dominance even, while the short-haired sister sits closed off, shrunken down to the side. That's typically indicative of someone who's more shy or uncomfortable. From there, both sisters return to their respective bedrooms for the night. The long-haired twin opens their door, revealing a bright, organized room with all of her trophies clearly on display. Visually, this tells the viewer, hey, this girl is organized, motivated, excited about her life and her future. At the same time, the short-haired sister enters her room. It's dark, filled with trash. The only trophies we see are uncared for, covered in dirty laundry, or even broken. Visually, the darkness, the trash, the uncaring expression on her face, they all work together to tell us that perhaps her mental health is in decline, She's not satisfied with this lifestyle or not even interested in tennis or their past victories at all. After entering their rooms, both sisters get ready for the night. The long-haired sister's personality is further reinforced by the way she excitedly crosses off another day in her calendar, getting closer to the championship match. She gets in bed to go to sleep, but is wide-eyed and unresting. This is a subtle yet powerful way to show the viewer that although she's confident and excited, maybe there's something else going on. 
that shows that her mental health is also not as stable as it might seem on the outside. The short-haired sister, on the other hand, puts on a pair of pajamas, sits down at her desk, logs onto her computer. She's greeted by a message saying, Welcome back, Darcy, with a little smiley face at the end. The bright computer monitor and the smiley emote visually oppose the dark, cluttered room, furthering this narrative that the real world is not nearly as important as being able to escape into the internet or her computer. After all, if she really cared about the tennis practice they had tomorrow, wouldn't she also be in bed trying to get a good night's rest? Before the intro ends, it cuts back to the other twin's room, panning over to her nightstand revealing a framed photo of the twins at a much younger age, a time when both of them were really happy. Standing with them is an adult woman. We're led to believe this is their mother, who clearly isn't around. And finally, the title sequence fades in. Twins in Paradise. Within the first 40 seconds of this animation, Fuen manages to introduce the premise of the story, the two main characters, their motivations, and even foreshadowing of the ending all without a single word being spoken. And what took me minutes to explain takes when mere moments conveying the exact same information, setting the stage for the rest of the animation. And the craziest part of all of this to me is how those visuals not only offer us the narrative information, but work together to convey a larger message reflecting on our own society. And that's where the beauty lies in Vuen's art. I could go on for hours breaking down the visual narrative aspects of Twins in Paradise, but we're out of time for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.